All right, good evening, everybody. It's um, almost seven o'clock, and uh, I had said we was gonna wait till dark, but I figured I'd go on and uh, hop on here for a few minutes. And if you don't catch it live, you can you can catch it later. Uh, it, you know, it'll be posted on Facebook, but I'll also post it on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, so if you got friends or family that, uh, or if you haven't signed up for my YouTube page, uh, we want to encourage you to go there. It's www.youtube.com backslash redemption today. Um, again, that's my personal uh, YouTube page. And uh, you'll find sermons on there from, um, from, uh, from current. Uh, everything that we've been doing, we've been posting on there. You'll find um, uh, sermons all the way back to when I was in Mount Sterling. You'll find songs from the group I used to travel in, the Redemption Quartet. Uh, so you'll find that stuff there. So if you haven't signed up and, and become a subscriber, uh, I'd like for you to do so. It's uh, youtube.com backslash redemption today. And when you subscribe to that channel, you'll get uh, an email letting you know when I upload uh, stuff, uh, content to that. So uh, we want to jump in here tonight with a with a Bible study because one of the things that that I have noticed on the news uh, that's been asked of religious leaders is um, where's God at in all this, and why did God cause this? You know, and so religious leaders trying to answer, you know, and I heard one the other day just say, well, you know, he simply didn't know uh, why this was happening and why God uh, caused it. Well. Let's let's talk about that for a few minutes tonight. Did God cause this? <clears throat> Did God cause the coronavirus to happen? Did God cause a, a worldwide pandemic? Um, where is God at in the midst of all this? Those are some of the things that we want to look at tonight. And so if you have your Bibles, grab them for just a minute. And let's take a look at some scripture. And, and we're going to try to, uh, I'm going to try to help you here a little bit. Uh, with uh, the, the how this all got started and where God is at in the middle of this. So if you have your Bible, uh, turn to Genesis chapter uh, 1. And uh, I'm reading from the New International Version, so Genesis chapter 1. And let's look at uh, verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. God said, verse 29, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food, and all the beasts of the air, and all uh, all the beasts of the earth, and birds of the air in the sky, uh, and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give you, ever green plant for food, and so it was. And so here God makes man. This is uh, now I guess a little bit better description of how man was made, and we'll look at that in just a second in Genesis chapter two. But here God makes man, and he gives them a commandment. He gives them a, a job. Let's say it that way. He gives them a task. And so in verse 28 of chapter 21, God blessed them and told them to what? Be fruitful. Increase in number. So man's job at the beginning was to fill the earth, to have children, which is interesting uh, and I won't go into that tonight, but we've talked. If you said in any of my Bible studies, it's interesting. If you look at the punishment that Eve has in chapter three, um, I don't believe Adam and e uh, Cain and Abel were the first children that Eve had. Um, I believe that they were the first children post fall uh, that they had, but I'm not sure that, uh, according to this scripture, that Adam and Eve, that Cain and Abel were the first two. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense because the the command that God gives them here is to fill the earth, be fruitful, and, and fill the earth, okay? So um, their first task was to reproduce, to have uh, other, to have children. And, um, and so 
He tells them that. He says, fill the earth and then subdue it. Have dominion over it. You're in charge, basically, is what God is saying. Uh, if you remember the account of when God created the animals, God brought the animals to Adam, and Adam named it, whatever he named it, it was. And so God made this man and this woman, and he put them on this planet, he gave them a task, and he gave them dominion. Okay, Simply means that they were in charge of everything. Um, God allowed them to be in charge of the earth. Okay, And so let's go to chapter 2. And let's look a little bit, a little bit uh, of this cre this creation account, um, verse seven. Then the Lord God formed man from a, from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being or a living soul. Okay, um, so this word here, uh, he breathed into man. That's the word we get our English word pneumatics. So it's a Hebrew word pneuma. And pneuma, you know, pneumatics, air. And so God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Um, and so if you look down um, through, um, uh, let's say, let's look at chapter 2, verse 15. Okay. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The Lord God commanded the man, you're free to eat from any tree in, in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. And then God makes the famous statement that every man has argued with uh, at some point or another in verse 18 when the Lord God said it's not good for man to be alone. Now, if you're a man who never said, God, what was you thinking when, he, when, he, when you wrote that? Uh, you're lying. Every man has thought that at some point, Lord have mercy, what am I doing here? Uh, so he says, I will make you a, a helper uh, suitable for him. Okay. Um, so here's the account of Adam. And Adam's job in verse 15 of chapter 2 is that he's to, be, he's to work the garden. Okay. So God created man. He put him on this earth, and he gave him a task. He told him to fill the earth, uh, repopulate the repopulate the earth, re, reproduce yourself, uh, and and work the the ground, <clears throat> work the garden. So, um, so that's where we're at. God gave man dominion. Okay, it it was Adam's to do with. Now let's let's go back and suppose that Adam had never fallen that Adam and Eve had never ate the fruit, they had never fallen, what would have happened? Well, they would have repopulated the earth. They would have, they would have reproduced. Their children would have children, and their children would have children, and their children would have children. And we would all basically be um, eternal beings that would never die. And uh, because death is not introduced into the situation until they eat from the tree. Adam and Eve were created to be eternal beings, to live in this garden, uh, to work this garden, to send their, then they would have sent their children out amongst the world. Um, but what we know what happens is that Adam and Eve eat the fruit, creation falls, man falls, sin is introduced, and uh, so we, we see that man, because of what he did, introduced death and sin. So, uh, let's go over to chapter 3 for just a minute. And you know that story. Uh, Satan tempts Eve, Eve. Eve eats of the fruit, gives the fruit to her husband. God comes walking through the cool of the uh, the garden in the cool of the day, and the man hides from, from God. And then uh, God hands out punishment. And so let's look at... Um, let's look at verse... 13. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Now this is the first, first thing we see here is somebody's not taking responsibility. Um, if, you, um, if you go back uh, to verse 12, well, let's go back to verse eleven. And he said, "God walking in the in the in the garden couldn't find it, um, Adam and Eve. Of course, he knew exactly where they were at, but he hollered out for them. 
and in verse 11 of Genesis 3, and he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Then the man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree and I ate it. Now here's the first example of man not taking responsibility. Now man blames two, two parts. He blames Eve and he blames God. Now God, if you hadn't given me this woman, this wouldn't happen and it's I wouldn't have ate the fruit if she hadn't given it to me. So you've got these, you've got the first instant now of fallen man not taking responsibility for what he's done. Eve, when it gets to Eve in verse 13, God says to her, the Lord God said to the woman, what is it you've done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And so humanity now has, has got the example set of us blaming other people for the things that go on in our lives. Now we know that it was nobody's fault but Adam and Eve. They had been given clear direction that if you eat from this tree, you'll die. Don't eat from the tree, you will not die. You're going to live forever uh, if you don't eat from that tree. Okay, that's that's what's on the line here. Uh, if you eat from this tree, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, we know they didn't die that day. We know that that day they uh, they begin the the death process. And so they lived many more years after that. But what happened that day was death was introduced into the picture. And so it was all from not, not eating the fruit, but from disobeying God. That, that's the whole purpose behind it. And so now God hands out punishments. And so in verse 14 of chapter 3 of Genesis, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you've done this, cursed are you above all livestock and, and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put an end to me between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, and he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now that entity that's talking about there is Jesus. He's talking that, that he will, Jesus will eventually come uh, and, and will crush the devil. He did that at Calvary. Uh, when, when he died on the cross, the devil thought he had him, but when he rose on the third day, he crushed Satan. Satan's powerless in the life of a believer. Now look at the, 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 uh, the uh, punishment to the woman. To the woman, I will make your pa I will make your pains in childbearing very se uh, severe, and with painful labor labor you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Now, there's a lot to say about this particular verse, because uh, whatever version you read it in, he talks about increased pain. Okay. Now, here's a question, ladies. Uh, how do you know increased pain unless you'd had children before? Now, notice that the punishment was not childbearing. That's not the punishment. But the punishment was increased pain in childbearing. Okay? So if Eve had not had children before, there's no way of knowing. Think about, think about you ladies that have more than one child. When you have your first child, you don't know what to expect because you've never experienced it before. So you don't know what kind of pain to expect. You know pain's coming, but you don't know how to what your what kind of pain level is going to be. You've never done it. But if you have a second child, and let's say the labor is worse, you know the difference between the first child and the second child as far as labor because you have experience. So I believe that Eve had already had children, one, because it was their, what they were called to do was to be fruitful and multiply, uh, but secondly, this sort of leans to the fact that he didn't say, you know, I'm going to, your punishment's going to be childbearing, your punishment's going to be increased pain. Now, you don't know the difference unless you've got experience beforehand, but here's um, the second part of that we'll look at, and then I'm trying to get to my main point. He says, you will, your desire will be for your husband and he'll rule over you. That word desire is a Hebrew word to shukal, which means to dominate. And so God says the, the natural state of the fallen woman is to dominate her husband, is to rule over. But he said, I'm setting the pattern that because you gave in and ate the fruit, he's going he's gonna to rule over you. And so um, that's where we see the battle of the sexes come in. And, and that happened through sin. Now, let's, let's look at verse 17 and look at what is said here to Adam, to Adam. 
because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree, which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Look what it says to Adam. Now notice this carefully. Cursed is the ground because of you. Hold it. Eve ate, and what did she get? She got increased pain in her body. Adam ate, and what did he cause? Well, he said, cursed is the ground because of you. Okay. So what does that mean before Adam ate that the ground wasn't cursed? The earth wasn't cursed. It didn't have the problems that we have now. Now look what it says. All right, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat fruit from it all the days of your life. Which means that before the fall, the toil, the labor wasn't, uh, the labor that he done, if you remember, God told him, uh, till the garden, okay, take care of the garden. But after the fall, work now becomes painful, sweatful, okay? Uh, that's part of fallen man. He says, uh, curses the ground from you through painful toil. So toil, the, the labor we do, uh, the labor that Adam did was going to be difficult. Obviously, it wasn't difficult before, but now it's going to be painful labor, okay? Now look at verse um, 18. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the ground. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat uh, your food until you return uh, to the ground since you were taken from it. For dust you are, and dust you will return. Okay? Now look, look here. Look at what happened to creation. Okay? When Adam fell, the world fell with it. Okay, creation fell with it. The ground and the earth is now cursed. Okay, the ground for the first time is producing thorns and thistles. Okay, so what happened when Adam fell, he, he ushered in death. Okay, because now, now the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. But not only did man fall, creation fell with it. And so what we see now is not the issue of, of uh, you know, why did God do this? Why did God cause the uh, the uh, hurricane? Why did God cause the flooding in, in uh, Houston, Texas a couple years ago? God didn't cause any of that. That's part of living on this planet now because this planet is cursed, okay? When Adam fell, creation fell with it, Okay? And so when creation fell, now we open up for sickness and disease and, and death and, and all the things we're facing now. And so when we make the statement, why, did God, why does God do this? God doesn't do this. God, does, God didn't create the coronavirus. God didn't send a, a hurricane to New Orleans to wipe it out because of sin. God didn't do that. Now, God does interject himself sometimes in history we see through the scriptures, God shows up and he does certain things. But man created the system by which we caused us to fall and all creation fell with it. And so now till the end of time, as long as we live on this planet because of Adam and Eve, we're going to have all these things happen. And I don't know why that is such a hard thing for people to, to understand or religious leaders to talk about. When Adam fell Everything fell with it, and it's going to continue that way until uh, the end of time, until Jesus returns, until we go live in the new Jerusalem, and the new Jerusalem is a recreation of the Garden of Eden, where everything is restored, okay? Now, it's true that the day you eat this fruit, you shall surely die, that Adam introduced death into uh, the earth. And to this day, thousands or however long it's been since Adam and Eve, people are still dying. You and I are going to die. Not because, you know, we're bad people, but because Adam entered in uh, to sin and sin brought death. 
you and I are now victims of, of Adam, and, Adam and Eve. We, we're born in sin and we need a savior. Now, when, when little babies are born, they're, not the, uh, they're born into sin. Now, they don't know it. They didn't do anything uh, to deserve it. You and I didn't do anything to deserve it except be born. That's why we have to be born again, okay? And so not only did he cause us to, to die, he caused creation to die with it. And so this is, this is what we're seeing every time we see something. It's not God sent it. It's, it's an Adam-created issue, okay? The earth is cursed. The, thorn, the, the ground before didn't produce thorns and thistles. Can you imagine... Just think for a minute, you know, that Adam was going about doing his work and, and he was happy doing it. He was happy tilling the fields. He was happy doing what it, whatever it was he was doing. And after the fall, he says, painful toll. You're going to have painful toll. This is not going to be easy. And so many of you all that have parents or grandparents that farm, you know, as they got older, you probably have mental pictures of them being broke down and and trying to continue to do the things. And you know how tough it was for them to do physical manual labor. Okay, It's because of Adam and Eve. And so the creation fell. All of it fell. So, yes, God interjects himself into the picture some, on, on occasions. He interjects himself, and he'll show up and and uh, change directions from time to time. But in general, the stuff that we see happening in our world, the hurricanes, the storms, the floods, the fires, the, the viruses and the sickness and the death is all a result of Adam and Eve. Okay. Now, why doesn't God stop it? Well, God's going to stop it when Jesus comes back. Okay. But until then... The earth is cursed because of Adam, okay? Until God finishes out the thing through Jesus, when Jesus comes back, sits on his throne, uh, the devil's thrown in the lake of fire, and the new Jerusalem comes down in Revelation, this is part of living on this planet, is that there's these problems, and they all trace back to the starting of Adam and Eve, and so where's God at in the midst of all this? I heard somebody say this the other day, which I thought was really good. God is in the hearts of his people. That's where God's at in the middle of all this. He's in our hearts. And our job as believers is to help others during this time, is to bless others during this time, is to meet the needs of others when when uh, they're unable to, to meet the needs. We're to, we're to be good to our neighbor. We're to you know watch out for one another. That's where God's at. He's in our lives prompting us and, and motivating us to do good works and to do good things for the kingdom. God could, could send Jesus back tomorrow and stop all of this. That's the only thing that's going to put an end to what we face on this planet is uh, Jesus Christ coming back and taking his rightful place and purifying this earth with fire. That's what the scripture says as we get over in the book of Revelation. Uh but until that happens, we're going to see these type of things. We're going to see all kinds of tragedies uh, because God's allowing it to play out. Uh, and the reason why he's allowing it to play out is that so others can come to know Christ. Remember what it, Jesus said in Matthew. Well, that's good. If you got your Bibles, let's go to the book of Matthew and let's look at the... Um, 28th chapter. And the 20th chapter of the book of Matthew and the 18th verse, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you to the very end of the age. Now notice what our, the commandment of the, the New Testament believer is, is to, is to make disciples, not just in America, not just in, in a few select foreign lands of all nations. 
Well, there's a reason why we haven't seen the return of Christ yet. We haven't preached it in all nations. Right now, um, we're not freely able to go into China and preach the gospel. We're not freely able to go into Iran and preach the gospel. We're not freely able to go into North Korea and preach the gospel. Those those particular governments will have to fall, and uh, the communist uh, type of uh, governments that they have or dictatorships that they have will have to fall, and Christianity will have to be looked upon in a... Uh, um, you know, at least a decent light to allow Christian evangelisms and missionaries to go into those countries and freely preach the gospel uh, because Jesus said the gospel would have to be preached to all the nations. So until that time happens, we're going to see the kind of things that we've seen. And so what's that mean? I think that the thing that it means for us is that we need to make sure we've got Jesus Christ in our hearts, that we've given our lives to him. Uh, creation has fallen, and it's going to stay fallen until Christ comes back to restore uh, the creation that has fallen. Uh, until then, we're going to have bad things. People are going to get sick. People are going to have, have problems. People are going to die of cancer because of Adam and Eve. They ushered in this stuff, okay? And so... When people, when people, preachers especially can't answer that, well, why, we're, we're, why does God allow this to happen? It's because of sin. It's because of disobedience. Well, you say that's not fair. Sorry, that's that's how God designed it. Um, God made it, and He gave man clear clear direction in Genesis. Look, Adam and Eve. You got free reign of everything in this garden except this tree. Now, why they couldn't, um, you know, why they couldn't leave that tree alone? Well, that you know, why is it that we keep falling into sin? Because temptation's pretty powerful. Temptation's, you know, man is it's rough some with temptation. And if you ain't, if you haven't ever, you know, listen, well, listen, ain't a person of us watching this that have never gotten into sin. I don't care what you say. I had a man tell me one time they've been married 40 years and never fought. <laughs> ah, you're crazy. You've been married 40 years and you and your wife ain't never fought. What is wrong with you? Yeah, well, we, he said we've never, in 40 years, we've never fought. And so I've done a wedding for their family. One of their children, and right during the middle of the wedding recept or the of the rehearsal, uh, them two sitting over there, they got they, they was disagreement about something, and they got to fussing with each other. And I looked over at them. I said, "Is this number one?" They looked at me real funny. They didn't know what I was talking about. But my point was, look here, you fought before, okay? Because sin is natural, and so. Again, I I believe this is the easiest way to understand what's going on is that Adam and Eve fell and all creation fell with them. Okay, God said, cursed is the ground because of you. So the earth is cursed because of Adam. And so this is why we see the stuff that we see. Uh, now we have hope that Jesus is coming back and you have hope that if you're out there today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, allow him to come into your heart. Allow him to be your savior so that while you live in this world, you got the hope of heaven, the hope of glory, that one of these days, these old bodies that are breaking down, these old bodies that are falling apart, uh, these old bodies that I mean mine, I'm, I'm was told uh, yes, uh, Saturday, Friday, uh, that I'm looking at least probably two more back surgeries. It depends on how long I can hold on. You know, but at least two more. These old bodies that are breaking down, one of these days are gonna are gonna get a body that is no longer uh, affected by sin. And so the main thing for us is to know Jesus Christ is our personal savior. Because guess what? We're all, death is still prevalent. The day you eat of this fruit, you'll surely die. Our family, our friends, and yes, even us, we will eventually die. Okay, some will die early. Some will die, uh, live long lives, and there's there is no rhyme or reason uh, wh why some live longer than others. Is we're all going to die? 
you know, I wish I could tell you why some, uh, the Bible says an appointment of the man wants to die after this judgment. Everybody's got an appointment day. Some get to live longer than others. and But the thing is, none of us know when. And the earth causes problems. So trust Jesus. Trust Jesus with your heart. If you've never placed your faith and trust in him, ask him today. The Bible, how do you do, how do you do that anyways? Well, the Bible says this. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you shall be saved. Folks, we make it way too hard. I'm here to tell you today, if you're watching this and you don't know Christ, do you believe he's the Son of God? Do you believe he died on the cross at Calvary for the forgiveness of your sins? If you believe that, Say it out loud. Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for me. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my heart. I place my faith and trust in you. I receive you as my Lord in Jesus' name. If you prayed that, friend, you just got born again. Now, some people say, well, now hold it, preacher. Can it be really be that easy? Yeah, 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 it is. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. Now, it's after you get saved the things you, you've got, we've got to work on. Uh, because when we get born again, our spirit man gets saved. Our flesh still is living in this fallen, cursed world. And so we've got to bring things in line. We've got to bring our spirit man in line by using the word of God. Okay? But as long as we live here, we're going we're gonna to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. But I believe, I, I just wanted to share that with you tonight, that, that, you know, that's the answer to the question is why did the coronavirus happen? Why did a flood happen? Why did a hurricane happen? Why did uh, a Houston flood a few years ago? Why did that great tsunami happen? Why is there earthquakes going on? Why is uh, the weather patterns out of whack? Because we live in a cursed world. Because Adam disobeyed God. Okay? That's exactly what happened. When Adam fell, all creation fell with him. Well, it's good to be with you tonight. Good to see you guys on, on here. And I hope everybody's doing well. I hope your families are are doing well. Uh, I, it's an honor to come and talk with you a little bit. Yeah, It's an honor to... Uh, to pastor those I'm pastoring now and those I've pastored in the in the past. It's an honor to be your pastor. And I, I'm uh, thankful that you allow me the opportunity to, to come and to share with you a little bit. Uh, we love you. Uh, we'll get together again Wednesday and uh, talk a little bit more. We'll talk about something. I don't know, just whatever comes to my mind. I don't have anything really planned out. Uh, but thanks to the folks that came this morning to the drive-in church. If you don't have a home church, uh, and you, uh, you would like to come, listen, you don't have to get out of your car, turn your radio on, and sit and listen. That's that's exactly what we're doing. If you're going to a church and your church doesn't have service right now, we encourage you to come to ours. You can always watch your church's live stream later, and you can come out and hang out with us uh, in our cars. Uh, but I think, I don't know about y'all, but I've enjoyed doing it, and I hope it's blessed you as well. Again, just a reminder, if you... Um, um, for those that may not have um, Facebook, you can find my stuff at www.youtube.com backslash redemption today. And if you subscribe to that, every time I upload something, you'll get an email, okay? So I know some of y'all have family and friends that may have the internet and not Facebook. They can access the sermons that way too, www.youtube.com backslash redemption today. All right, pray for us. Uh, as we continue to try to do what it is God's called us to do, um, we uh, are just account of the privilege again to serve alongside of you. And we'll get through this together. Trust me, we'll get through it. We're going to get back to normal one day. Uh, and I hope when we do, you'll appreciate your church more than you ever have, uh, especially the freedom to be able to go and to worship uh, we take that we've taken that we've taken that for granted in America far too long that we can just get up and go whenever we want to. Well, now we can't. Um, you know we're restricted. But when this restriction's over, I hope that you'll appreciate the place that you serve more than you ever had before and make a commitment to be there uh, and serve along beside God's people. We love you. Everybody have a great week.